In this video, we will cover Apple Device Support Exam, 20 of the most realistic and toughest practice questions, straight from the actual exam topics. The exam is called Apple Device Support Exam, SUP 2020-24. It falls under the Apple Certified Support Professional Certification at the associate level. You'll face 80 questions in 120 minutes. And yeah, that's tight. Apple last updated the exam on 14th of April 2025, so everything you'll see here is based on the most recent version. All right, here's the first one. An iPhone running iOS 18 refuses to exit recovery mode, even after multiple restore attempts through Apple Configurator. What's likely causing this? A. Auto DFU trigger. B. Corrupted SEP chip, say needs NVRAM reset? The correct answer is B, a corrupted SEP chip. The secure enclave handles all the encryption and security logic on the device. If it's damaged, the system can't finish the restore, no matter how many times you try. So yeah, the phone's stuck not because of a software glitch, but because the security hardware itself is broken. Okay, next one. You're trying to revive an iPad running iPadOS 18 using Apple Configurator, but it fails with error for thorns under 13. What's the most probable cause? A. Network block. B. Faulty NAND chip. C. Wrong IPSW file. Let's test us. The correct answer is B. A faulty NAND chip. That error usually gets people checking their cables or networks, but in reality, 4,013 is almost always a hardware problem. When the NAND, that's the storage chip, starts failing, the restore can't complete. No amount of cable switching is going to fix that. Let's try this one. What happens if a user enables File Vault on a Mac that doesn't have a secure token enabled admin account? A. Login fails. B. Disk can't unlock. C. Setup silently fails. The correct answer is C. Setup silently fails. C. File Vault depends on Secure Token to grant encryption permissions. If there's no Secure Token enabled admin, macOS doesn't even tell you something's wrong. It just rolls back quietly. You think File Vault is on, but it's actually doing nothing. Here's a tricky one. How does macOS decide when to prioritize iCloud recovery over a local recovery key? A. When MDM enforced. B. Setup assistant only. C. Always equal. The correct answer is B. When File Vault was enabled during Setup Assistant. If File Vault gets activated right at the beginning of system setup, iCloud is treated as the primary recovery path. In most other cases, the local recovery key is either equal or preferred, but with Setup Assistant, Apple leans into cloud recovery by default. Here's a network one. A Mac running macOS Sequoia keeps dropping Wi-Fi when switching between home and enterprise networks. What's most likely going wrong? A. Missing DNS config. B. 802.1x misconfigured. Mac randomization clash. The correct answer is C. Mac randomization clash. Enterprise networks, especially with RADIUS, rely on consistent device identity. When Mac randomization is on, the device shows up as a different client every time, and the network won't trust it. So even with full bars, you lose connection. Let's go iPhone this time. An iPhone on iOS 18 shows a strong Wi-Fi signal, but says no internet connection. All other devices on the same network are fine. What's the real issue? A. Low data mode. B. Mass E blacklisted C. DNS cache broken. The correct answer is B. The device's private MAC address is blacklisted on the router. The signal's strong, so it's not a range problem. But if that randomized MAC is blocked at the router level, you're done. No internet for that iPhone, even though it connects perfectly. All right, next up. After restoring from iCloud backup, a user realizes all their Safari passwords are gone. What's the most likely reason? 
A. 2FA Delayed Sync B. Old iOS version C. Not signed in The correct answer is A. 2FA Delayed Sync iCloud Keychain doesn't just kick in automatically. Even after restore, if 2FA hasn't completed or is delayed, the passwords won't sync yet. It's one of those Apple wait for it moments most people overlook. Let's dig deeper. All devices are signed into the same Apple ID, but Keychain still refuses to sync across them. What's the hidden cause? A. 2FA disabled. B. Low power mode. C. Region mismatch. The correct answer is A. 2FA disabled. Keychain literally won't sync unless every single connected device has two-factor authentication enabled. Even one unsecured device breaks the whole chain. Apple doesn't mess around when it comes to Keychain security. An MDM configuration push to supervised iPads is failing silently. What's a rare but valid reason? A. Setup Assistant Pending B. Expired TLS Cert C. Duplicate UUID The correct answer is C. Duplicate UUID If the profile's UUID matches a previously installed profile, even if that old one was deleted, macOS or iOS will silently ignore the new one. No errors. No logs. It just doesn't apply. Why is the Erase All Content and Settings option missing on an MDM enrolled iPhone? A. Reset blocked by MDMB. 30 day delay. C. Needs supervision. The correct answer is A. Reset blocked by MDM. If the restrictions payload disables erase functionality, the option simply disappears from settings. Supervision isn't enough. The MDM profile must explicitly allow or block that option. After updating to iOS 18, a user gets locked out of their Apple ID, even after entering the correct password. What's going on? A. Login anomaly detected. B. Needs face. ID C. Profile certs invalid. The correct answer is A. Login anomaly detected. Apple's risk engine uses location, device history, and behavior to detect suspicious activity. Even if the password is correct, the system might trigger a lockout until the user verifies further. Why might Apple ID recovery take up to seven days, even after successfully passing to UFA? A. Device was offline. B. Billing issue. C. Phone number changed. The correct answer is C. Phone number changed. If the trusted number was recently updated, Apple enforces a wait period before granting full account access. Even with proper 2FA, it's part of their security delay mechanism. A user erased their device using Find My, but activation lock is still enabled. Why? A. Device not removed from iCloud. B. Erased was offline. C. Not supervised. The correct answer is A. The device wasn't removed from their iCloud account. Just wiping it isn't enough. The user must remove the device manually from iCloud Syndrome Rights IO devices. Until then, activation lock sticks. An enterprise Mac is activation locked and won't respond to remote MDM commands. What's the only way to unlock it? A. Configurator bypass. B. MDM unlock token. C. Contact Apple with proof. The correct answer is C. Contact Apple with proof. Apple requires the original proof of purchase and your organization's ID before they'll remove activation lock. There's no shortcut, even for businesses. An app is approved to use the camera, but still can't access it. Why? A. Screen time blocks it. B. Needs full disk access. C. No camera usage key. The correct answer is C. No camera usage key. 
If the developer doesn't include NS camera usage description in the app's plist, the system will block camera access entirely, even if the user approves it manually. How can an MDM admin silently block contact access for a managed app? A. Push restrictions, profile. B. Reinstall with entitlements. C. Not possible silently. The correct answer is A. Push restrictions profile. The contacts entitlement can be blocked using configuration profiles pushed via MDM. The user doesn't get prompted. Access is just denied. A user enables voiceover but can't swipe through app content. What could be the cause? A. Custom gestures used. B. Enabled via Siri. C. Legacy UI web view. The correct answer is C. Legacy UI web view. Apps using older web view components don't fully support modern accessibility APIs. That means voiceover can't navigate properly even if enabled. Zoom and assistive touch features won't work together on iPadOS 18. What's the reason? A. Multi-gesture conflict. B. Mirroring disables. Zoom. C. Guided access conflict. The correct answer is B. Mirroring disables Zoom. If screen mirroring is active, Zoom is deprioritized, and when assistive touch is enabled, Zoom can't override it, so they effectively cancel each other out. On macOS Sequoia, a user attempts to reset NVRAM using startup options, but it doesn't work. Why? A. T2 chip error. B. Wrong key combo. C. Blocked by MDM. The correct answer is C. Blocked by MDM. Modern MDM systems can restrict hardware level actions, including NVRAM and PRAM resets, using custom config profiles. It's part of device security compliance. An iPad enrolled in MDM keeps reinstalling a removed app automatically. What's causing this? A. Auto install restriction. B. Assigned via VPP. C. Out of supervision. The correct answer is B assigned via VPP. Apps distributed through Apple's Volume Purchase Program will auto-reinstall unless removed from the assignment scope. Just deleting it from the device won't help. Head over to pass4future.com. They've got full practice tests, and a bunch of them are totally free. You'll find the Apple Device Support Exam section right on the home page. Click it, and boom. All the questions, instantly accessible. Seriously. It's one of the best places to sharpen up before test day. Check it out. The link's in the description and pin comment.